All right, everybody, we've all heard the narrative that America's in decline, that China's going to overtake us, that we are a civilization falling apart. And if you follow this channel closely, you know we've actually talked about these issues and we've highlighted them as real risks. But something has dawned on me recently that has me significantly more optimistic and hopeful about the future of this country. We're all rightfully focused on GDP growth rates and manufacturing and trade deficits and the gigantic debt problem, which are all super legitimate issues. But a lot of us are also missing what's about to happen in the next 10 years that's going to cement American dominance for the next century, most likely. And it's all happening right above our heads, literally right above our heads right now in space. America is about to own space in a way that no other country can ever dream of. And when I actually say own, I don't really mean we have some satellites up there doing some work. I mean, we're going to legitimately control the infrastructure, the resources, the intelligence, the manufacturing capacity in a domain that's literally infinite. And once you control space, you control everything that happens on Earth as well. Let me walk you through exactly what I mean. Think about what's being built right now this second. We have Starlink fully operational with over 9,000 satellites up there in space, providing global global high-speed internet, that's American. We have AI satellites like StarCloud that are going to power the next generation of super intelligence, an American company. We have the reusable rockets that can actually get all this stuff to orbit cheaply, like Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Starship, New Glenn, all American. China's trying to compete, but they don't have anything close to what SpaceX is doing right now, especially with Starship. They launched their first reusable test vehicle very recently, which was kind of similar to Falcon 9, but Falcon 9 is already old technology at this point because Starship is going to replace it. What's coming next is going to completely transform what's possible for humanity, and it's all going to be American-led because we're the only ones with the launch capacity to actually do this stuff at scale. And we're not even talking about super intelligence that's going to be birthed from this movement. You need massive compute to train these models, these super intelligent models, and where's the best place to put them? In space. You've got unlimited solar power, you have no cooling costs because you just radiate the heat into the void, no land costs, no permitting, no protests about water usage for cooling. You simply just launch these data centers into orbit and they just run forever on sunlight. And who's building the rockets to get that hardware up there again? SpaceX. American. And who's building the AI models that are going to run on that compute? Companies like OpenAI, XAI, Google, NVIDIA, all American companies. And then if you go a little bit further ahead, you've got asteroid mining. Now this one sounds like science fiction, but the economics actually work now that launch costs are dropping. There's asteroids in space with more platinum than it has ever been mined on Earth, more rare Earth elements than China controls, and iron than we could ever use. And once you can get to those asteroids, you remove every single bottleneck for manufacturing advanced technology. The rare Earth minerals that China basically has a monopoly on right now, that stuff goes into every phone, every computer, every battery, every advanced electronic. But once we're mining asteroids, that monopoly basically becomes worthless. And then you've got moon bases. This will probably happen in the early 2030s, but you have NASA's Artemis program that's already laying the groundwork. SpaceX is going to be the lander for the astronauts. And why does a moon base matter? Because the moon's gravity is one sixth of Earth's gravity, which means launching stuff from the moon into deep space is way easier than launching from Earth. You can build build manufacturing on the moon, you mine the lunar regolith for your resources, and you launch from there. And suddenly getting to Mars or the asteroid belt or literally anywhere else in the solar system becomes cheaper. The moon just becomes the jump off point for everything else. And America is going to own that infrastructure. Then you've got the Mars colony. Now, Elon Musk has been talking about this forever and people meet him for years for this, but Starship is actually flying and the economics are starting to work. You need a million tons of cargo to Mars to build a self-sustaining city. Now with Starship, if they can actually get to the cost targets that they're aiming for, you could actually do that in 20 years or less. Now, it could take 30 or 40 years, but it doesn't really matter how long it takes. The point is, America is the only country even attempting it. China talks about Mars, but they don't have the rockets. They don't have the reusable technology. They don't have the private sector ecosystem that's actually innovating on that technology. Russia's space program is basically dead at this point. Don't even get me started on Europe. They are trying, though. They are trying. But it's really just America. And why does a Mars colony matter for American dominance? Because it guarantees the survival of the human civilization, which means it guarantees the survival of American values, American technology, American culture. If something catastrophic happens on Earth, nuclear war, asteroid impact, super volcano, pandemics way worse than COVID, whatever, humanity continues on Mars. And that colony is going to be flying an American flag. Actually, Elon's probably gonna put some sort of freaking Mars flag on there. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? But it's going to be American-led, American-built, American finance. I hope it's the American flight. Come on, Elon. And then you literally have AI satellites in space that will train super intelligence. Training AI models in space give you unlimited power and compute. And the models are going to be smart enough to design better rockets, better mining equipment, better habitats for the moon and Mars, better manufacturing processes. And those better designs enable more space development, which enables more compute in space, which enables smarter AI. This is a feedback loop that just compounds on itself. And America's the only industry that's positioned to ride that wave because we're the only ones with all the pieces. We have the AI companies, we have the launch providers, we have the capital markets to finance the whole thing. We got the regulatory environment that actually lets private companies do stuff without government getting too much in the way. Do you really think China's government is going to let a private company build a Mars colony? You really think they're going to let some entrepreneur launch thousands of freaking satellites in space without total state control? Just look at Jack Ma, they can't do it. Their system doesn't allow for that kind of rapid innovation that you would need for something like this, especially when America is doing it. And the technology that gets developed for all this stuff, it doesn't just stay in space, it comes back to Earth and makes everyone's lives better. The satellites improve internet access for billions of people in remote areas. The AI trained in space solves problems in medicine, material science, energy production. The mining techniques developed for asteroids get adapted for Earth and make resource extraction way cleaner and more efficient and way more safe. The life support systems developed for Mars bases, that specific technology improves sustainability here on Earth. The crazy part is most people don't see this coming. They're still thinking about the great power competition in terms of GDP, and military spending and manufacturing output. These are all 20th century metrics. Those metrics still matter, and I'm not saying that they don't, but they're not where the game's being played right now. The game is being decided literally 300 miles up, 240,000 miles away at the moon, 140 million miles away at Mars, and America's winning that game before most people even realize it's being played. Why do you think we have a space force? Now, of course, does this mean America is perfect? Of course not. We have a lot of problems. We have infrastructure that's aging. We have a healthcare system that is a total mess. Education could be way better. I'm not saying everything's great here, far from it, but the best things tend to be created during the bad times or the hard times. What I'm saying is a doom and gloom narrative that America is in terminal decline and China is about to become the dominant superpower that narrative is looking at the wrong century. We're refighting the Cold War with manufacturing and trade balances. And meanwhile, America is building the infrastructure for the next phase of human civilization. Space-based super intelligence that gives us unlimited knowledge and problem solving. Asteroid mining that gives us unlimited resources. Moon bases that give us cheap access to the entire solar system. Mars colonies that guarantee humanity's survival no matter what happens on Earth. They're all American-led all American built. And the gap's probably gonna to continue to get wider because the more we do in space, the cheaper it gets, the faster we innovate, the harder it becomes for anyone else to catch up. China could literally pour a trillion dollars into their space program right now and still be a decade behind. And by the time they get caught up to where we are now, we would be another decade ahead. That is what dominance actually looks like, not just being in the front, but being so far ahead that the gap is unbridgeable and the compounding advantages make it impossible for anyone else to compete. Think about what Tesla and SpaceX have achieved in their respective industries and apply that to the entire country. This is where all of this is headed. But America is probably going to be untouchable in space, which means completely untouchable anywhere else. And so it's fair to worry about GDP growth rates and trade deficits. I completely understand if that's something we all want to be worried about and we should be worried about. But when you see rockets launching every week, satellite constellations expanding, AI companies training bigger and bigger models. It's increasingly looking like a future where America doesn't just maintain its position, but it actually expands it beyond anything that's ever been seen before, potentially in human history. And as long as we all win from it, especially Americans, but the broader world, then America's success is basically guaranteed. Now, I know if you've watched this video, you're probably a big fan of Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX. And if you're a Tesla investor and you have more than $2 million in Tesla stock, I've partnered with Rebellionaire to sponsor this video. Rebellionaire is run by Bradford Ferguson and Matt Smith. They're both super well-versed Tesla analysts. If you follow the Tesla space, you know exactly who they are. They have an investment firm that partners with Tesla investors to reach their financial goals. The problem they're solving for is that there's a lot of Tesla investors out there that may have investing or financial partners that don't quite understand or really believe in the long-term potential thesis of Musk Industries like Tesla. 
they may not get the best advice or recommendation when it comes to their holdings. Whereas Rebellionaire actually understands the full long-term potential of the company. They understand full self-driving's potential, RoboTaxi's potential, Tesla Bot's potential, the Optimus, energy, and the synergies between XAI and SpaceX. They've analyzed the company inside and out. They've done a ton of novel research. They've done cross-country FSD trips. This is literally what they do for a living. They make sure that the thesis is going to play out in the future. So if you're tired of getting the cold shoulder from investing partners that don't understand the story and don't understand your investing thesis, and this is something that sounds interesting to you, go to rebellionaire.com slash Farzad. That's rebellionaire.com slash Farzad. And that's how they'll know that I sent you. I have a link for that in the description in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching.